Raise the sun of the sun.
I'm gonna uh, okay. I'm gonna log out of my existing one, if you don't mind, and, and go to the new one. Well, I'm going by my phone here. Well, welcome back, dear saints, family, friends. We're glad that you can uh, join us for the third installment of this series of special talks with Brother Minoru. Uh, we uh, are, uh, have been doing this talk since Wednesday. We had a session on Wednesday and the second one on Friday. So uh, this is a talk that is being given to all the churches in the southern, South Orange County. And we are uh, including Huntington Beach, Santa Ana, Irvine, Lake Forest, and San Juan Capistrano. We uh, are glad that you can join us, and we hope and trust that these talks have been a big help in just putting the whole uh, circumstance involving the COVID-19 crisis into perspective concerning our response. And we'd like to uh, spend a, uh, another time this morning for some helpful fellowship. I'm gonna turn it over to Brother Minoro, and we'll have another special time. In, at home. I trust that all of you are joyous, uplifted, and even victorious, one with our resurrected and ascended Christ. In these days, uh, one of the purpose of these talks is to um, have a opportunity to share something with the brothers and sisters um, in the churches uh, concerning uh, these times that we're in and what is the significance of these times. As we all know, uh, the world situation, indeed, the human history 
is an indicate indicator of uh, the Lord's move on the earth um, for his testimony. And um, so when we are faced with, you know, crises, um, uh, upheavals, and uh, momentous changes uh, in uh, our experience uh, in society, in the world, in civilization, uh, we of all people, those who are the Lord's believers, the Lord's followers, the Lord's kingdom people, those who have the Lord's interest in our heart should always ask this question. What time are we in? What is the Lord doing through these outward environment? We should not be those who don't care or those who are impassive or, or in, in, uh, indifferent and uh, uh, just going along and just uh, ride through this next wave, as they say. Um, we should not be like this. Um, we are just like people in society uh, facing the same thing. And we have our own kind of anxiety and, uh, and uh, sometimes some fear. But beyond all of these things, um, and the Lord uh, does take care of us, we should all learn to cast our anxieties upon him uh, and enjoy uh, the uh, guarding of our mind by the peace of God. But on the other hand, we really should go a little deeper and say, Lord, what are you doing? What are you trying to say? Uh, particularly in relation to his interest and his move. That should be our heart and our spirit. And I have to testify these days, uh, all my waking moments are quite consumed, preoccupied with this um, prayer and with this kind of a seeking. I hope you all will do the same, that you would, we would all draw near to the Lord, come to the Lord's presence, and pray in this kind of way. Now, um, in this series of uh, home talks, uh, beginning on Wednesday night and then Friday, I share with you that uh, this is just my personal feeling before the Lord. Um, I don't purport to be a prophet. I cannot speculate what will happen next. I don't even know. Uh, to tell you the truth, oh, the Lord is moving this way or the Lord is moving that way. But I can humbly and uh, carefully share with you what is on my heart and some of the insights and some of the understanding, at least uh, to this point, uh, of what uh, I feel the Lord may be speaking to us, touching us as the church people. Um, and um, the first thing that I've been speaking about, and I'm still burdened about this matter, is prayer. You have to remember in Acts chapter 2, the first church, the church in Jerusalem, the description of that church, uh, of the features of that church, if you will, in the beginning of church, the church life on the earth. And this is the description, you know, after so many thousands were saved and gathered together there to be the first church in Jerusalem. And they continue steadfastly in the teaching and fellowship of the apostles. Of course, we know what that is. And that is the teaching of the apostles that is brought in by the, and the fellowship of the apostles. And uh, that uh, have to have something to do with the unveiling of God's New Testament uh, economy. And uh, th that is the teaching of the apostles and the communication of that um, um, between the uh, um, um, believers and uh, with the triune God through the messages that the apostles would, would bring to them. And through this kind of bringing of the messages of the teaching, they become joined 
uh, through the apostles, as it were, with the triune God, and they enter into that single, unique, universal fellowship or participation of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And we, we know this, and this is a great thing, and this is central thing in God's work and God's plan and God's economy. But then it says that they also continue steadfastly. Notice this is not just doing it uh, once in a while in a sporadic way, but daily, moment by moment, daily, the, these disciples continue steadfastly in the breaking of the bread, which nowadays we cannot quite do so conveniently because we're on our homes, but I trust in spirit we are doing this. That is to remember the Lord in the accomplishment of his great and marvelous redemption. But that is the first thing because that is what the Lord instituted as a replacement to the Old Testament Passover. And he charged us to remember him, you know, in the first early church, they remember the Lord daily. They broke bread daily. It was not just some kind of communion or formality. Their remembrance of the Lord was fresh, powerful, prevailing. So they do this from house to house. But that is one side. The other side is the prayers. The prayers showing that the Lord's table, so-called, the breaking of the bread and the prayers are the two main pillars, if you will, of our church life today. One is towards the Lord. The other, you may say, is again his enemy. One is to remember him, his person and work. The other is the church's cooperation with him who is in the heavens, both interceding for us and also administrating the world's situation to execute his economy, to carry out his purpose on the earth. The church on the earth should be a vessel, should be a echo chamber uh, to correspond with both of these. This is what the vessel, the church as the vessel of God is to do. And so these are the two main things in our church life. My burden in these days is particularly on the matter of prayer. Brothers and sisters, I feel a strong and very, very all-consuming burden within me that what one of the things at least what the Lord wants to do in at least the Lord's recovery in the church life is through these times of restrictions and through these times like this when we are not so free and so on and to carry on so to speak in a normal way we would take these times these weeks months and who knows how long this will be we don't know as i said after this health crisis there will be a worse crisis facing us it's called the economy you know the world's economy the u.s economy how long would that be? I do not know. But my point is all these uh, are sovereignly allowed by the Lord, surely as a warning to the world's people, but it's also a speaking to us, the church people. I think, I think one of the things that must, uh, the Lord must accomplish in these days and may we cooperate with him, is to really build up the prayers, to build up the prayers, plural, all prayers, all manners of prayers of the saints, of the church. Very burdened for this. From the youngest to the oldest among us, we all should be praying Christians, the praying saints. The prayers of the saints is mentioned very much in the book of Revelation, very pivotal to God's work in the end of this age. And we are not just praying here alone. We're praying with the saints, including the saints in the past, the saints in the, the coming future. And cumulatively, there would be something called the prayer of the saints that will affect the closing of this age and the 
destruction of the en God's enemy, Satan, and the bringing in of the kingdom of Christ. Th this, this is not just conjecture or fairy tale, brothers and sisters, this is too real. And so the church as a whole, which a capital C Christianity has defaulted, has, uh, has uh, failed in this regard at to be that praying church, one with God and one with God's interest. The Lord's recovery is here to stand in the breach, to fill in that gap. That's why the Lord's recovery is here. We are not another just mere Christian movement. By the Lord's mercy, with all the revelation that is brought to us by the ministry of this age, we see something much greater, much higher, much more eternal. And so it behooves us, we have a responsibility now, an obligation to whom more is given, more is required. We have the duty, brothers and sisters, in the Lord's recovery now to correspond with the Lord. And the highest and deepest way to do that is none other than prayer, the prayers. So in these days, the burden is to build up the personal prayer life of the saints. Each and every one of us must, must almost in a way rebuild our prayers. I don't mean we don't pray, we have no prayer life at all, but it is not as strong, as robust, as persevering as it should be. These are special times and we're moving more and more to the end times. And so the need for more prayer and the need for more persistent prayer is needed today. And of course, when we talk about prayers, we don't mean just the ordinary prayers, the common prayers to meet our needs. There's nothing wrong to pray those prayers. I'm not saying that. You know, we need to pray casting our anxiety on, on him. So we do need to pray those prayers. But we are here particularly talking about a higher level of prayer, the prayer of this age, dispensational prayer, the prayer that will effect in something on this earth, the prayer that will really be a joining of us with the throne in the heavens, our joining with the heavenly intercessor to pray his prayers on the earth by the inter interceding spirit on this end, on the earth's end. It takes the joining of heaven and earth in this mighty prayer, in this, in this economical prayer that would allow the Lord to proceed to go on and carry out what he wants to do. We cannot carry those things out, but we are a cooperator on the earth. The church is that channel. The church is what the Lord needs on the earth to sympathize with him, to be one with him, to agree with him on the earth. If two or three would, would two of you would agree in harmony, that agreement is just not two persons agreement. They are together in one accord agreeing with the heavens will. And so they pray this way. And I tell you, whatever is they pray, binding or losing or whatever, will be something that has been bound and lost loosed in the heavens. That means it's already the heavens will. They are merely on the earth to execute it, to be a channel of it, so that that will in the heavens can be carried out on the earth. Without that prayer, the Lord is stuck. The Lord is restricted even. Can you believe the church has such power to, if you will, control what the Lord wants to do? What a position the church is in. What a privilege the church has. So dear saints, these days we need to rise up to pray ourselves personally in twos and threes. And the church need to rise up to what? To uh, carry out the ministry of prayer. 
the ministry of prayer. I say again, not just prayer as mere activities, not just prayer as events. These uh, 21 day prayer is coming to an end. We are extending for nine days. We're praying for 30 days. Even those 30 days will end. What will we do after the 30 days, the church of God? What will we do as the saints of the Lord? Brother Dick Taylor, many of you know him, a co-worker among us. He is, um, because of health reasons, cannot minister the word so much. But just uh, a week ago, today, or uh, maybe six days ago, he called me in the morning and said, Brother Minoru, I have a feeling, I'd like to talk to you, that after these 21 days or 30 days, whatever, he said, we cannot stop. How can we? How can we? Then, then that prayer would be just a program, an event that we did. We cannot stop. I said, Brother, I said, Brother Dick, I fully agree with you. I don't know what to do. You just to keep extending this, this, this unceasingly prayer. I, I don't know what to do. So, but the burden is heavy inside, in agreement with him. The church cannot be the same. The church life cannot be the same. In a way, our Christian life cannot be the same after this present crisis, this COVID crisis. Oh, dear saints, I do not know how you feel. I hope that you will bring this to the Lord and consider this in the Lord's presence and say, Lord, what about this? How should the church be? I don't care if church, you are a church of 30 or your church of 300. It is the same. The Lord has a need today. And Brother Lee had taught us, and he was an example for us, that he always watched and observed the world situation and grasped the opportunity to turn, to pivot, to improve, to adjust himself, to take action in a way that would match the outward environment in the world today. So today, I want to use the rest of the time to give you a second thing that is important in how we can sustain this kind of a prayer. I talk about Wednesday, uh, Friday night, the word. I hope you will spend time to consider this matter. To sustain our prayer, we need the rhema word, the indwelling word. We need to pray the word. You know, many times we come and pray, we try to think of something, we consider something. There's no need for you to do that. Go to the word and start praying the word. And when the word becomes living, it indwells you. It puts the thoughts of God in you. These are the promises of God. And our spirit within us will respond to that. In fact, the word and the spirit by our prayer would become one. And this spirit would anoint us. He is the one interceding within in us, right? According to God. Then you say, what is God? Well, I tell you, God's heart is in his word, in full display, in in completeness, you want to know God's heart, you want to know God's desire, go to the Bible, go to his word. But these are just white, uh, black on white. We need to, through prayer, turn this really into the breath of God and let it indwell our hearts and in our spirit and become spirit within us, you see? And I'll tell you, this will what? put something into our minds, not only into our spirit, but into our minds. The mind of the spirit will become our mind. Our mind will be filled with the mind of the spirit by this kind of praying of the word. So you just pray the word. And out of this, let me tell you, prayers will come forth according to God. The spirit interceding for us joining with us in our weaknesses, because often we don't know what to pray for. So pray the word, and then have a spirit of prayer, a readiness to petition, to supplicate, right? That word, that word will flow, that word will anoint, that word will teach us, the anointing teaches us in all things, 
And one of the all things I believe must be how we pray to give us utterances, to pray according to God, to truly echo his present prayer. Christ is praying right now. Even as I'm speaking, he is praying even perhaps for the speaking. We need to echo him in real time, as they say, Zoom. You know, we need to have a Zoom with Christ. You know what I'm saying. So we are corresponding with him. We are one with him. We're on this heavenly ladder. There's a traffic going on. Those who pray know this. This is very real. When we, so this is why sometimes after we enter into prayer in this way, we really touch the heavens. You cannot stop. You just keep praying and praying. And you have, after you finish praying, the assurance that this is not me praying. This is the Lord praying above and the spirit interceding within me. This is truly the Lord's prayer. Oh, if all the saints would pray this way and I tell you, and if um, the church would pray this way, my goodness, dear saints, how much will happen? I cannot even imagine. Now, the second thing I want to mention to you today, I don't have that much time, is the twos and threes. And I want to refer you to you, Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, which is the classic chapter on the twos and threes. Firstly, I want to quickly refer you to verses 16 to 17 that shows us a kind of structure. Now, I'm very careful to use this word. I don't mean organizationally. I mean organically, organically in the body, in the church. Through these chapters, first of all, uh, I'm sorry, 15 to 17, you have three things. Number one, you have, you know, this is a case of a person dealing with a brother who sinned, who had a problem and try to shepherd him and restore such a one. So number one, it says, go and reprove him, go to him, visit him, talk to him between you and him alone. This is the one-on-one, -on -one, okay? This is the one-on-one. -on -one. So the saint, the singular member of the body is the, the first structure, if you will, the member of the Lord's body, you, me, each one of us. In verse 16, but if he does not hear you, then take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word will be established. This is the second level. One, two, or three. Of course, we're not legal, but it is this small, very small group, like a cell group of brothers and sisters. This is the, this is the basic corporate block or community of believers in the church life, twos and threes, twos and threes. This is not just, oh, the Lord randomly say two and three. The Lord have a reason to say two and three because these twos and threes are very flexible. They can come together easily. They're very mobile. And when it's twos and threes, they all operate, they all participate, they all are active. These twos and threes. Now let me finish in verse 17. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. That is the next level, the church. So these twos and threes are not the church, but they are a operational unit, vital unit of the church. Very, very key. And so in the uh, following verses, it talks about the twos and threes in operation in three ways in three ways. Okay, first of all, I just go backwards in verse 20. For where two or three gathered into my name, there am I in their midst. You have to realize this whole passage from verse 15 to 20 are talking about the same two and three. But it is just describing what the twos and threes enjoy and what they are supposed to do and how they're supposed to be. So in this chapter of Matthew 18, where the Lord talks about the local church for the first time in the New Testament, chapter 16, is on the universal church. Chapter 18 of Matthew is on the local church life. And in this talk, he's emphasized the twos and threes. The twos and threes is the basic unit of the church life in operation. 
And so here, they, what do they do? Number one, it says that when they gather together into my name, into the Lord, into the spirit, there am I in their midst. So the first thing, when the two and twos or threes are gathered, they enjoy the Lord's presence. Emmanuel is with them. The Lord is with them. When you are just one of you, maybe not. But when there are two or three of you, the Lord has a midst to come to. The Lord has a midst to be with us. This is a promise. What promise is this? There am I. There am I. When we are gathered by him into his name. Secondly, it says, whenever truly I say to you, if two of you are in harmony, the twos and threes on earth concerning any matter for which they ask. This ask again is prayer, is petition. It will be done for them from my father who is in the heavens. So the second main work or operation or function of the twos and threes is none other than prayer. Brothers and sisters, by ourselves individually, it's hard to sustain our prayer. And the prayer meeting of the church is once a week or twice a week or something, or the sister's prayer or the brother's prayer. How do we have a daily prayer? It's like these days, the time slots. Twos and threes coming together to pray every day is possible. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Can we not build that up as part and parcel of the church life from now on every day? Can we not agree with our companions of twos and threes just to do it every day until the Lord comes back? I challenge us. This was the first church life from house to house. They didn't have Zoom. They didn't have any internet. We have all these conveniences with us, my brothers and sisters. Let us challenge ourselves. Let us rise up in these days to come to another level of prayer to correspond and, and cooperate with the Lord. And then finally, these twos and threes, as I mentioned already, they do the work of visiting, of gospel preaching, of restoring a dormant one or a fallen one, shepherding others. These are the three primary functions of the twos and threes. Number one, to enjoy the Lord, his presence, his word, his riches. And number two, to pray and petition, to bind and to lose things concerning the Lord's interest. And number three, to preach the gospel, to, to contact people, to restore people, to shepherd people. These are the three functions. I hope that the Lord will use these days not only to recover our prayer, but to recover and build up the twos and threes church life. What Brother Lee called vital group. It's 30 years ago, and it has still not been worked out in a widespread prevailing way. I like to see the sisters, the brothers, the college students, even the young people, twos and threes. This is not just for friendship, just to hang, just to know this is for this partic these particular purpose. I believe the prayer will help this. And this will surely help us to sustain our prayer. Two is better than one, because when one falls, the other one can pick him up. And two in the bed will keep each other warm. These are words in the Old Testament. There are too many cases in the Bible that talks about the power of twos and threes, both in the Old Testament and the New. David's mighty men, three of them, broke through the Philistine lines and and got water from the well in Jerusalem for David. David poured it on the ground and said, these are the blood of these men, I cannot drink them. But the point is, it took three to do that. Daniel, we talk often about Daniel these days and his companions, there are four of them, but anyway, it is in the principle of twos and threes. They pray when, when uh, Daniel uh, uh, received the, the dream from the king, he didn't know how to interpret. Let's pray, he said, let's pray. So, brothers and sisters, um, let us these days build up this twos and threes in our church life, especially, especially with this matter of prayer. Now, I have more to say about twos and threes in the matter of gospel, 
and shepherding in another time. But this morning, I will just stop here. I hope that you will consider this matter, bring it to the Lord, and bring it to practice. Practice these things. Let us have a new church life. COVID or no COVID, a new church life with all these vital operational units in action, doing so many things, I believe the Lord would have a new day, would give us a new day in the Lord's recovery. Now, um, um, I turn it over back to Mark. I think there's some more fellowship here. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you, Brother Minoro, uh, for that uh, encouraging talk to not only persevere in prayer, but also to pursue uh, not only one-on-one, -on -one, but also in twos and threes uh, as the basic unit of the church. Well, we're um, going to give you a brief presentation, Saints, of some resources that would be available to you in your twos and threes to uh, do, conduct all the matters of of, that you do in the twos and threes, whether it's enjoying the Lord's presence in the word, uh, helping you to ask uh, prayer in prayer and petition, as well as to visit, shepherd, uh, preach the gospel, restore the saints. And so we've asked uh, Tony Barbara, uh, Brother Tony Barbara from Bibles for America, to present to you these resources that we'd like to make available to all the saints. So with that, I'll turn it over to Tony, uh, and you can present uh, for the, the next few minutes. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mark. Saints, on behalf of Bibles for America, I'd like to announce to you a new gospel page on the Bibles for America site called Share the Good News. And uh, what I'm going to show you right now is the URL, the way for you to go to that site, gospel.bfa.org. And there, uh, and we'll, we'll take you there right now, you'll be able to see uh, a gospel resource page. So as we've been praying, seeking the Lord concerning this COVID-19 global pandemic, surely our heart has been breaking uh, concerning the need of so many. So this new page has various easy to use resources to share with others about God's salvation. First thing that you will find when you come to this page, if you scroll down, is a section on digital tracks. If you click on one of the links, you'll notice that the track itself will come up for you to read. And uh, it's, uh, then if you'll scroll down at the bottom, you'll notice buttons that make this track very easy to share. There's uh, text messaging, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And uh, when you click any of those links, it will either, it'll bring the actual uh, image, for example, if you go to Facebook and uh, someone will click that and they'll get the gospel tract right there. If you send an SMS message, it'll send the URL for that. Uh, depending on how their phones are set up, they'll actually see the tract right away. So just to save time, um, well, I should mention at the bottom of the track, there's also a link. We won't go there. But if someone receives the gospel after reading the tract, it says, if you prayed to receive the Lord Jesus, visit this page. There's something prepared for new believers to help them go on to order a Bible and help them in their daily going on with the Lord. The next section of this page, if you scroll down, you'll notice gospel videos. We've selected three gospel videos. These are the most popular videos that we have concerning the gospel. They've been viewed by hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. And again, you'll notice you can watch the video, but you can also immediately share them by clicking one of those links and that gospel video will be immediately sent to your gospel friends. Uh, even last night, I sent one to my mom because I know that she's uh, She's a lover of the Lord, but she'll be using that to share it with all of her friends. Then below, one more section. Uh, there's a section on blog posts. We've selected three blog posts. How to experience peace in a troubling environment. Why did Jesus have to die? And how do I get saved? We believe these are the pressing questions that many people are asking. Uh, in addition to these, we'll add more as time goes on. But essentially, 
what you can do is press the, the actual blog post title, for example, why did Jesus have to die? It'll take you to our blog page. And from there, you'll notice on the left side, there's many links that you can use to share that uh, blog post with others. And also if, uh, if a need is met, they can then go back or they can actually sign up for the blogs in a continuing way. Anytime someone signs up for a blog, then we'll, we'll know who they are and we can uh, continue to contact them on a, on a continued basis if they're interested. Then going back to the page, there's one last section and it's on podcasts. Essentially the podcasts are our blog posts and some of our gospel tracks that have been in, in, re, in uh, uh, spoken form. And you'll notice again below that podcast, there are all the sharing links. So uh, to save time, I'll just leave it there. You'll be receiving the same kind of uh, information on the weekly fellowship that'll come out this week. But uh, we, we encourage you to pray with your twos and threes Come to this page, consider if, if this is something, there may be other uh, burdens you have besides this page, but in case you have a burden to share something, at least you know there's something readily available that's been designed and, and is really focused on ministering this good word of the gospel to those who are in need. And I'll end here and turn it back over to Mark New. Thank you, Brother Tony. Well, uh, on behalf of the Church in Irvine, we'd uh, like to thank you again for joining us, and uh, may the Lord be with all the saints, as this may be the final talk for this particular series. We're still looking to the Lord to continue to speak to us, even uh, daily, even all the words that are spoken. If you've missed any of these talks, just want to let you know that the recordings in English, Chinese, Korean, and Spanish can be found uh, using the web link, we've simplified it for you, tinyurl.com slash talk dash series, tinyurl.com slash talk uh, slash talk dash series. Uh, all the recordings will be there. It's available for use. Um, and many saints I've heard from around the globe have been uh, helped by these talks. Uh, until then, may the Lord really gain us in these special times to band together in the twos and threes. And according to Romans 12, 12, rejoice in hope, endure in tribulation, and persevere in prayer. May the Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Okay, saints, uh, we... Uh,